Hi, I'm Zane Merva and welcome to Drive The Mall, the YouTube channel where I drive everything I can get my hands on and let you know exactly what I think. This week, we're driving the Mustang Mach-E. I'm sure you've heard about it. Maybe you've even considered buying it. There's a lot of videos and articles and other things out there going over the minutia of the Mach-E and its specs, capabilities, and features. So we're just gonna take a more experience-based approach to this video. In case you've been out of the loop or just not paying attention, the Mach-E is entirely electric. There's no gas engine whatsoever. And if you don't believe me, just take a look up here in the front. This particular Mustang Mach-E that Ford has loaned me is a premium level, all wheel drive, extended range equipped model. That means it has an 88 kilowatt hour battery, 346 horsepower, 428 pound feet of torque, and an estimated range of around 270 miles. It prices out around $55,000. A Mustang without a big throaty V8, let alone an exhaust sound at all, has caused quite the uproar. Some call it sacrilegious. So we're gonna take a look later on in this video at that outrage and find out if it's deserved. Today is day six of my time in the Mustang Mach-E, and over the five previous days of driving it, I've had a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you if you're interested in or considering buying one. So with all that said, let's take a drive and I'll tell you five things that I've learned about the Mustang Mach-E over the past five days that I've been driving it. So the first and perhaps the most significant thing that I've found while driving this Mach-E for a few days is just how usable it is. I can drive this vehicle on a daily basis, take it anywhere I'd normally go and never have to worry about range anxiety with its 270 mile range. The battery is just big enough to do everything I'd need to do. I could even take this to Boston and if I didn't find a charging station free down there, I would be able to drive it back. The range is just that good. I also appreciate that the second row seat and the rear hatch have a lot of room. I can put my son or my dog back there and bring along a lot of stuff for a weekend getaway. And I wouldn't have to change how I drive or where I go at all if I were to buy one of these vehicles. And that's a big departure from electric vehicles that we've seen on the market up until now. One of the most fascinating parts about the Mach-E is how absolutely fun to drive it is. A lot of people ask me if it still drives like a Mustang despite being electric, and I can emphatically say yes. This vehicle has all the performance, all the sportiness, all the handling of a regular Mustang, but in a much better package you get instant torque when you lay on the throttle and with over 300, I think it's 400 something horsepower in the GT, 350 something here in the premium, it accelerates with all the vigor you'd expect from a gas engine with none of the noise. This particular premium model does zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. But the GT, which if you want to spend a little bit more money for, shaves an entire second off of that and will do zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds, which no matter which way you look at it is absolutely impressive. And yes, this car does feel a little bit heavier than its gas counterpart, but that weight is down low, giving the whole vehicle a more planted lower center of gravity. So it still handles like a Mustang and it feels like a Mustang from the pony on the front to the pony on the rear. You're not gonna regret getting the electric version over the gas version. It just feels every bit as good as a V8 powered Mustang. You know, I've been pretty lucky in my day. I've driven some really nice and really expensive cars, including Ferraris, Bentleys. I even brought my son home from the hospital in a Rolls Royce. 
But one thing I didn't expect when driving this Mustang was the amount of attention I'd get. Supercar level of attention. Everywhere I go, people want to know what this Mustang is about, what exactly it is, and is it really drive like a Mustang despite being an electric car. And even more surprising is it's not like people don't know what the Mach-E is. They know it's a Mustang. They know it's electric. They're just interested in checking it out and seeing if all the complaints that people have had about it being a Mustang are even founded in the first place. And I've been happy to tell them otherwise. It's one aspect of driving this all electric car that I just wasn't prepared for. A couple days with the Mach-E and you begin to really appreciate its interior. It's got a couple things going on that I'm gonna cover here, but the biggest one that you're probably gonna see right off the bat is this massive infotainment and control screen in the center of the dash. It allows you to control everything from how your vehicle functions to using the navigation system, connecting your phone, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, the climate, heated seats, all of that jazz is right here. You also have another digital display as your gauge cluster. It shows you your speed, your range, how much battery you have left, how many miles you've traveled, and the like. I do wish it was a little bit more customizable, but it is pretty beautiful. I also would like to talk about the materials composition that Ford has included here. You've got this beautiful uh, cloth covering followed up by a fake carbon fiber style look transitioning down to a leather stitched interior. It's just different materials, different colors, different textures wherever you look and whenever you look. And Although the vehicle itself is sporty and gets your heart racing when you go around the curves, it's really nice to be going down the road and see all of these features, this huge screen, the digital gauge cluster. It adds this high tech feeling to the vehicle. You feel like you're at the cutting edge of technology. And then after all of that, you look up and you see the completely transparent fixed glass roof and it just sets everything off. No matter what you're gonna be doing in this Mustang, it's comfortable, it looks good on the inside, and it's jam-packed with technology. One of the things that I've noticed over the last few days as I've driven the Mach-E is that you're gonna need to have a charging strategy when you own this vehicle. Ford includes a standard level one slash level two charger with the vehicle but level one charging isn't really that great. Using 110 volts as opposed to something quicker like 220 or 480 takes you about five to six days to fully top this guy off. And for somebody who drives their vehicle every single day, that makes keeping the battery fully charged or having enough range for long distance adventures quite a bit of a challenge. So if you're gonna buy this or any electric vehicle, I would highly recommend you invest in at least a level two charger. Now, another option is DC fast charging of which the Mustang Mach-E is compatible with. And you could go to a public DC fast charging station and in about an hour fill this thing up most of the way, get well over a hundred miles in a short, period of time. So if you have one of those DC fast charging stations near you and you know that you'll be able to use it on a regular basis, well, that may be all you need. But for me, I don't own an electric car. So I have to use the 110 standard household outlet. And that means I've had to adopt a charge it whenever I'm not driving it strategy to keep this Mustang topped off, which really isn't as bad as it sounds, but I have access to electricity and outlets at work and at home. And most of the places that I'm going to, I can charge and plug the charger in and keep my battery topped off. But if you only have access at home or at work, it may present a little bit of a challenge. 
that said, with an 88 kilowatt hour battery, you can go a few days without having to top off your car if you have the right charging station to stay on top and keep your vehicle full. So with those five things considered, that brings us to the big question. Is the Mach-E worthy of having the name Mustang emblazoned on the side? And I would have to say after five days of driving this beast, undoubtedly, yes, this is a great Mustang. And I'll tell you why. Not only does it have four doors, and is able to take my kid, my dog, all my stuff, and have the range I would need to drive it on a daily basis, but it has the characteristics that make a Mustang a Mustang. It's sporty, it has a lot of power, the low-end torque is outstanding, and it drives really well. And that's not even to mention how quiet and comfortable it is. So, I have a GMC Hummer EV on order later for this year and driving this Mustang around just makes me super excited to take delivery of it. I just can't wait to experience this type of vehicle all by myself, all for myself later on. I am really going to be sad when I have to give this Mustang back. And so if you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle or the Mach-E specifically, I would recommend you definitely go to your local Ford dealer and try one for yourself. Find out what makes it so special, so unique, so different from every vehicle that you probably know a Mustang to be and why it lives up to the Mustang name. Anyways, after saying all that, I kind of want to take it for a drive again. So let's pull this charger and go out for a spin. I'm Zane Merva from Drive Them All, and I'll see you next time.